What's up everyone, Michael here. So today we are gonna go over a matrix problem called rotting oranges. This problem has been asked a lot at Amazon and Microsoft recently. It's definitely a little bit difficult, but I'm gonna explain it step by step. So for this problem, we are given an integer matrix where each cell has one of three values. Zero, which is equal to an empty cell, one, which is a fresh orange, and two, which is a rotten orange. So an example integer matrix could look something like this. Every single minute, any fresh orange that is horizontal or vertical to a rotten orange also becomes rotten. With this statement, we must return the minimum number of minutes until there are no fresh oranges left. If it's impossible to make all of the fresh oranges turn to rotten, we return negative one. So I know this problem might sound confusing, like what the hell is up with all these oranges? Another way to phrase this question is essentially just this. Every minute, a one that is a neighbor to a two changes to a two. Return the minimum number of minutes until there are no ones left in the matrix. That's at least the way I like to rephrase the question. So when I see this problem, I immediately recognize a breadth first search can be used. So how do I know that? What is the intuition to know a breadth first search should be used? So whenever you have a problem statement that includes a matrix and a minimum that needs to be returned, BFS should definitely come to your mind. I'm not saying that in every case, BFS will be you know the, the most optimal approach, but in a lot of the cases, if you, if you see matrix and minimum, you should definitely think of BFS. Also, another neat trick is we can look at our constraints. And if we look at the constraints here, we see that M and N will always be between one and 10. This means at maximum, we will have 10 rows and 10 columns, which is only 100 elements. This isn't a massive matrix by any means. A BFS is going to ensure that the minimum path will always be found first. Of course, there's going to be outliers for problems, but at least from my experience, if you have matrix plus finding a minimum value plus very small constraints, chances are you need to use a breadth first search. So now let's dive into the algorithm now that we know the intuition. Say we have this example. First, we need to count how many fresh oranges we have. Essentially, we need to count all the ones in the matrix. And in this example, we have six. Next, since we're doing a BFS, we're going to use a queue to store the position in the matrix that we're looking at. We're going to add all positions to the queue that have a rotten orange. The reason we do this is because every minute, all neighbors to a rotten orange will turn rotten as well. So you can view a minute as just an iteration inside of our queue data structure. When we pull n times from our queue, where n is the number of elements inside of the queue, we're increasing our time by one minute. In this example, we only have one rotten orange in the matrix, so we're gonna add position zero, zero to our queue. Now that we've done that, we're gonna start our BFS. So in the first iteration, we're gonna pull from our queue a single time because we only have one element inside of our queue for this iteration. We're gonna initialize a variable called minutes to keep track of how many iterations have passed. So this minutes variable is eventually what we're gonna return from our function. And now we're going to pop from our queue and we're going to check all of our neighbors. So we're gonna add the right and down neighbor because those have fresh oranges. They have a value of one. And so now our queue is updated to the following. And after we add those positions to our queue, we need to change those fresh oranges to rotten oranges. Also, we want to decrease the amount of fresh oranges we have since we just changed two of them to rotten. So originally we had six fresh oranges and now we have four. Lastly, since we just completed this iteration, we pulled from our queue a single time, we're going to increase our minutes by one. Now for the second iteration, we're gonna pull from our queue twice. And this is because we have two elements in our queue so far. So when we pop from the queue, we get a coordinate of zero, one. 
And from here, we're going to add the right and down positions because they also have fresh oranges. So now our queue is updated to the following and we're gonna change those fresh oranges to rotten. Once again, we are also going to decrease our fresh orange count. Before we had four, and now we're going to have two. Next, we're gonna pop from our queue a second time. We have the position one zero, but this time we add nothing since all the neighbors do not have any fresh oranges. Finally, we're going to increase our minutes variable by one, so now we have a value of two. In the third iteration, we have two elements in our queue, so we're gonna pull two times. We pop from our queue, but from this position zero two, we don't have any neighbors that have any fresh oranges. We pop from our queue again, we have position one one, and our down neighbor, is a fresh orange so we're going to add that position to our queue and then we're going to change the fresh orange to a rotten one next we decrease our fresh orange count by one and then we also are going to increase our minutes variable by one in our fourth iteration we have one element in our queue so we're only going to pull a single time for this iteration we pop position two one from our queue and the right neighbor is a fresh orange so we're going to add position 2 2 to our queue and then we're going to change that fresh orange to a rotten one we're going to decrease our orange count by one down to zero and notice now that we have a fresh orange count of zero we don't need to continue any more iterations even if the matrix is much larger we already turned all of our fresh oranges to rotten oranges. So lastly, we're just gonna increase our minutes variable by one. So now we're at minutes equal to four, and we can immediately stop iteration for our BFS. So our final result we're gonna return from our function is four. It took four iterations to turn all of the fresh oranges to rotten oranges. All right, so let's go over the code for this solution. We are given a 2D integer array grid, and this is gonna contain pretty much zero, ones, or twos representing the different orange types. So the first thing we wanna do is initialize our lengths of our rows and columns, and we need to count how many times we see a fresh orange in our grid. So as you can see, I have a counter called fresh oranges and it's just counting the number of ones. The next thing we need to do is initialize our queue data structure because we're doing a BFS. And we are going to add all positions that contain a rotten orange into our queue. So as you can see, I'm adding all positions that have a value of two inside of my queue. And notice that I'm doing i times n plus j. What this is doing is it's converting 2D coordinates to a 1D coordinate. So instead of having to use an integer array or a class to represent coordinate positions, I can actually just use an integer. If you want more details about how this works, I have another video that I will link in the description about how that works. But for now, I'm gonna move forward. So next, what we need to do is actually initialize our BFS and start essentially pulling the positions off of our queue. So before I move on, I'll explain what all this code is doing. Line 22, I'm initializing a minutes variable. So this is going to be how long it took to convert fresh oranges to rotten oranges. So by the end of it, this we're gonna return minutes from our function. And then as for line 23, this is how, th these are pretty much the conditionals for our BFS. We want to continue our BFS if our queue is not empty and if we still have fresh oranges that have not been converted to rotten oranges. Line 24, we initialize a size variable. And the reason we do this is because we need to know how many times to actually pull from our queue. So for example, if our queue size on line 24 happens to be one, we only wanna pull from our queue a single time for this iteration. And then on line 26, I am pulling from the queue. So I'm getting 
the 1D integer and then I am converting it back to a 2D position. So when you use the division operator, that gives you the row number. And then when you, when you use the modulus operator, that will give you the column number. So this is actually how we don't have to use any integer arrays for our coordinate positions. We can just use single integers. So next, what we want to do is check all of our neighbors. We wanna check the up direction, right direction, down direction, and left direction, and see if there's any fresh oranges in those places. So now what I've done is on line three, I've initialized a 2D integer array called directions. And what this is doing is it's pretty much saying, okay, go and check my horizontal and vert vertical neighbors using just zeros, ones, and negative ones. So just as an example, if you look at the first array, when, when I say negative one, zero, what this means is the negative one is the row position and zero is the column position. So essentially what this array is, I'm saying, okay, I want to check the up direction because when you decrease your row number, that means you're looking up. So likewise, in the next array, we have a row number of zero and a column number of negative one. I'm pretty much saying I wanna check the left direction because when you decrease your column number, that means you're you know, going left. So that's what this 2D integer array is doing. Now on line 31, I am initializing a new X and Y variable, pretty much just adding my row and column number to this direction array. And now all we need to do is just verify that this X and Y value is a valid coordinate. So what we can do here is we're gonna say if x is greater than negative one and y is greater than negative one and x is less than m and y is less than n and we need to check that x y position is a fresh orange so we're going to say grid at x y is equal to one if that is the case then we know we want to add this position to our queue so we're gonna say q dot add x times n plus y. So we're just converting this x, y, 2D coordinate back to a 1D coordinate. Then we're going to decrease the amount of fresh oranges we have. And then we're going to update this position, position x, y, to be two. And the reason why is because we want to convert any fresh oranges to rotten oranges. And then finally, when we come out of this for loop, that means we've completed an iteration and we can immediately increase the number of minutes. So the last thing we want to do is there's a, a bit of an edge case. Remember that if we cannot convert all fresh oranges to rotten oranges, we need to return negative one. Well, we already have the information to know whether we need to do that. All we have to say is return if fresh oranges, if it's equal to zero, then that means we converted them all and we can just return the number of minutes. Otherwise, we return negative one. All right, so that is it for this problem. Let's submit the code just to make sure it works. So our time complexity is going to be big O of M times N where M is the number of rows we have and N is the number of columns. We have to touch every single position a single time whenever we are counting the number of fresh oranges we have. Also, we do another check over our grid to add any rotten oranges into our queue. But since we're you know, doing big O notation, we're, we just bound it to a single M times N. Our space complexity is also big O of M times N. Because if you imagine in the worst case, let's say we had all rotten oranges inside of our grid. From line 16 to 23, we are going to add every single position into the queue. So that's why we have a space complexity of M times N. Feel free to check out some of my other videos for more practice on graph related problems. And also check out my public discord channel if you're looking just to study more, maybe 
study with some partners or in a group, this would be a great place to do so. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.